Oh, Dr. Bhatt, how are you? Uh, fine, you know, sir. Sorry, there was a little delay in connecting. No. Now I'm online. Excellent, excellent. How are you, doctor? Good. Very Thank good. Thank you. Uh, very good. I know uh, these are, I know the last time when we met at uh, the Radio Mirchi station, uh, things were much better than what it is today. I know this is a new normal, as we say. Yeah. You know, they. It's the post-COVID and post-COVID life. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> yeah, before that, when you, when you were at the studio, we were the pre closer to each other by uh, less than six feet, right? Now it's... That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> now we are separated quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Dr. Bhatt, um, you had mentioned something about um, the three eyes of um, the COVID. Uh, would you be able to tell us what those three eyes are? Yeah, the uh, three eyes of COVID is immunity, inflammation, and intervention. Okay. Intervention refers to medications and what you do. Okay. And those are the key three key things in COVID. Okay, okay, okay. And uh, when it comes to COVID, uh, you said uh, we have like uh, uh, three uh, different uh, possibilities. Would you be able to explain what those are? Basically, you know, ask anybody, either you are a pre-COVID, COVID, or a post-COVID person. Okay. In other words, we all are susceptible to have COVID, and then all have common denominator of in inflammation and Im immunity. Hmm. Okay. Huh. Interesting. Okay. Okay. So, impurity and inflammation and intervention. You said right immunity and inflammation oh okay and then uh, if you come into the types of immunity that we have related to covid uh, would you be able to tell us what are the different types of immunity okay basically what you need to know is there are five types of immunity and then two are i mean four are paired one and two is a innate versus acquired immunity mm. and the three and four are active versus passive immunity okay. and the fifth kind of immunity is herd immunity okay. and we'll look at each one of them so that your audience can understand you know each one of them and how they can make use of it sure, sure. okay yeah so first let's look at innate versus acquired immunity. Okay. Innate is a natural immunity. There are two levels to it. The first line of defense is like your skin and your mucous membrane. And the second line of defense is uh, like your cells in your blood, like uh, neutrophils, natural killer cells, macrophages, and then antimicrobial proteins and so forth. Mm. Now this innate immunity occurs within uh, a minute to 12 hours after a foreign agent like a virus invades, invades us. Mm. What is very important to know is that yeah, our gut mucous membrane is one of the key players in it, which we will explain later. It, not only your uh, respiratory mucous membrane as it is commonly uh, spoken in the media. And the second kind of immunity in this category is the adaptive immunity. Okay. That is, after the antigen enters our system, we develop specific defense mechanism called antibody, or it is a T-cell mediated defense mechanism. Okay. And this takes anywhere between one to seven days, and it optimizes after a week or two, and that is why the IgG antibody that we measure for coronavirus, you know, happens after a couple of weeks of having the infection. Okay. So we now covered at innate versus acquired, at acquired immunity. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now shall we go into the other category, active, which is uh, active, and passive. active versus passive immunity. Active immunity is an antigen as soon as the antigen is received. You know, your body tries to make antibody against it, mm -hmm. and that is active immunity. Okay. Whereas uh, passive immunity is if somebody has recovered from a disease, like in this case, virus disease, you use their blood 
fat or a plasma and give it to the patient that is passive immunity. Okay, okay. Another example of passive immunity is a mother passes the immunity mm. to the newborn. Oh, okay. So we covered now the two kinds, uh, uh, two pairs of immunity. Okay, okay. Okay. Mm. Now the fifth category of immunity is called herd immunity or immunity by community. Mm. What it means is mm. when 70% of the population is immune either by natural infection or by vaccination, then a person who is not immune becomes a protected person because the herd or the community is no longer susceptible to the infection. That is why you are kind of defending yourself within the front line of the community, which is called herd immunity, which is very important to know because with the COVID, we expect, you know, the herd immunity will take very long time. That is 70% of the world population has to be immune either by having the infection or by getting the vaccination. This is the reason why the total protection from COVID is not in the near sight. It is after a couple of years or oh, more. Okay, 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 got it. So the herd, coming, herd immunity is not possible in the near future. Right, herd immunity is not easily achievable okay. unless we have many, many deaths in the society in order to acquire it by natural infection or when the uh, vaccination is an effective vaccination is not only invented or discovered mm -hmm. but also mm -hmm. is available. Okay, okay. So one question, uh, Dr. Bhatt, about this, what, what you just said. So the 70% uh, number, how did that come about is one. The second part of it is, you know, uh, what exactly, who exactly are these 70% uh, frontliners that you mentioned? Are they people that come in contact with uh, travelers from other countries that bring in uh, viruses or, you know, even within the same country, somebody is already infected and then this 70% basically gets exposed first and then the, the yeah yeah I, I got the, uh, the, the question you're asking 70 percent is what generally you know the epidemiologists you know it is not a magic number it is 70 or more okay. you know ideally about 80 85 is perfect number but mm. 70 is a somewhat ballpark putting it another way if one person gives a disease to two people, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. if those two people both are immune, then this person cannot give the disease to that person, those two people. Got so it. if you, this is the concept. Now, you say, what is the U.S. population? 340 million, somewhere there, right? right? right. And if we, it's 70% of our population, have to be vaccinated or have to be immune by a natural infection or more. 70 is not a it's a ballpark number. So okay. scientists estimate it is somewhere in that range. Okay, got it. So basically you're saying if like two people out of three are not infected, the third person's chances of getting infected is lower. And that's how okay. you come at the, uh, you arrive at the 70% number pretty much. Right, it is our own community no, where you live in. Yeah, seventy percent. No way he can get. Okay. Okay. Okay, doctor, I was going to ask you about this uh, new drug called Remdesivir. From what I read from uh, various various media and watching news, I don't think I have a full grip of uh, understanding of uh, how it works and for who to whom it applies. Would you be able to explain to us uh, a little more about this drug? Okay, basically Remdesivir is a medicine, it is an antiviral medicine okay. which uh, reduces or stops the viral multiplication. Actually it acts on an area called viral polymerase. But all we need to know is that it, it retards or slows down 
the multiplication of the virus inside the human body. Okay. That's one, one point. Second, when you give it and how you give it. You give it by IV only, by intravenous route only as of now. Mm -hmm. In future, it may be available as an yeah, injection in your muscle called uh, intramuscular injection, or maybe remotely as a pill. As of now, it is only available for critical patients who are admitted to the hospital and who are going downhill in order to stop the viral multiplication. Okay. So it is not go is a made it is not a major game changer for a common person. Okay. It is only for people who are very sick and who are admitted to the hospital. Okay, okay, all right, okay. And uh, have we started administering the, the the medicine already, or is it still a work in progress? So it, it is being used in a certain protocols in certain hospitals already. Mm -hmm. You know, then, uh, but for uh, mm -hmm. use in every hospital, it will take a couple of weeks at least, okay. and uh, ideally almost a month. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, doctor, uh, do you mind uh, if we take a short music break? This is, uh, you could uh, pay some tribute to uh, Rishi Kapoor. I thought uh, you might also enjoy one of his very favorite songs, a super hit song. Okay. Yeah, this is a short song. <laughs> So we are talking about uh, the herd immunity and uh, you are telling about uh, the 70% of the population if it was immune in some form or the other, there is a good chance that the rest 30% will be protected, right? And uh, there was a listener in the, one of the, uh, from uh, the Facebook feed uh, who was asking if how did uh, Sweden manage to get uh, herd immunity with everything being open, like I think they just shut down uh, I think they just shut down the schools or uh, some public places were closed, but predominantly they kept most of the community open. Any idea how they managed to keep uh, coronavirus from spreading? 
What, what, what was the question? I didn't hear that. Oh, the, the question was, uh, how did, uh, any idea how uh, Sweden prevented uh, the coronavirus from spreading uh, uh, with, uh, with the herd immunity in, in progress? Uh, they did not, uh, they did not uh, control uh, the schools from being shut down, they did not control the shops from being shut down, nothing, but very minimal uh, businesses were shut down, but they still managed to keep the virus from being spread. I'm sorry, the sound is not clear. Now, can you summarize your question? Can you ask? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, one second, Menki will try to reword. <clears throat> There's a lot of echo, and then... Uh, yeah, so, uh, Dr. Bhatt, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you very clearly. Yeah. Okay, so I think um, uh, what R.J. Sudha was asking was, how was Sweden um, able to, you know, um, use the herd immunity effectively. To, to effectively to prevent the spread of virus there? Well, you know, the, it is a UP-mind concept, because this virus, as we know, is a, it is a novel virus. It has never been in the surface until now. So what they claim as herd immunity is not the true herd immunity. Mm. You know, it is an euphemized statement of it. And uh, because, uh, you know, they, uh, like I said, by definition, herd immunity is you need to have enough of the population that has the antibody. Right. You need to test everybody to find out if they have IgG blocking antibody in at least 70% of population. So oh. I don't know how they can make that claim, mm -hmm. but uh, uh, it, you know, it is, what, what do you know about it? Yeah. Yeah, we don't know so, how they manage. What we hear is from the news. It's basically, like you say, uh, you know, what we hear as a claim, right, uh, from Sweden, that they they don't uh, they're not seeing a rise in the number of infections. Yeah. Right. It could be that they didn't do enough tests. I, I don't know. Uh, yes, what you are asking is: Is there a native inherent? You know, the by nature they happen to have the immunity. That's okay, possible. That is, it still needs to be explored. Yeah. And right, the right. same logic can be applied to India, you know, with a large population, you know, 1.3, 1.4 billion people, you know, the number of cases there are very low. And why? Is there a some level of herd immunity, which is innate, native, you mm -hmm. know, and uh, that needs to be explored. That's true. That is, okay. That's very true. Yeah. That needs to be explored. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And doctor, uh, we are talking about a uh, lot of testing here, either in the Bay Area or here, even in India, about uh, whether you have the you have the coronavirus or you have the antibody antibody testing or whatever it is. Could you tell us a little bit more about uh, what is antibody testing means? Okay, antibody testing is the immune response you have created inside your body after the virus enters your body. Okay. And this immune response has the two phases. Phase one is if immediately after you get the infection, particularly when you have the fever, IgM antibody goes up. Okay. And then phase two is after approximately seven days or so, uh -huh. IgG antibody goes up. And that is the protective neutralizing antibody, okay. the IgG one. Okay. And that one peaks approximately three weeks after the infection. And then it is supposed to sustain in your body. How long? We don't know. Okay. Because of, this is a new virus. The assumption or the hope is either it gives you lifelong or at least for that year, you have protection. Uh -huh. And this is an unknown factor. Okay. But for now, you know, it is safe to at least assume that the IgG antibody, when it is detected in your blood, number one, you have recovered from the infection. Mm -hmm. Number two, partially mm -hmm. or totally, you are immune. And uh, that is the hope. And some of us could have the infection and have very minimal symptoms and 
can still have IgG antibodies. Oh, okay. That is why, you know, in large uh, population like in New York, we have so many cases of COVID, you know, IgG antibody uh, testing will be one of the scientific ways to predict, you know, whether it is safe to return to work and so forth. Oh, okay. Having said that, mm -hmm. you know, you might ask, is this antibody test available right now, here and now, mm. in our Bay Area? Uh -huh. The answer is yes. Huh. Okay. And Quest Lab uh -huh. and Lab Corp are the two largest labs okay. which we have in San Francisco Bay Area. Okay. And these labs do this test. Uh -huh. And the test is covered uh -huh. by most insurances. And uh, as of yesterday, that I know the price, it is approximately fifty dollars for cash paying patients. That's and I also mm -hmm. heard Quest Diagnostics will do the test even without a doctor's prescription. Okay. And uh, lab core requires a doctor's prescription. So that is why the antibody test is is as of now available in our local community. Very nice. Very good. That's good to know. Actually, that's in a, in a way, you know, if you do the antibody test and you actually don't do a test for the presence of COVID, isn't that enough uh, to say, hey, you know, I'm even if I have COVID in my body, it, it doesn't matter because I have the antibodies to fight it. Answer is as follows. The presence of COVID virus in your, and in your body is called presence of the antigen okay. or the virus. And it does not, it only tells you have either infection or you are a carrier. Mm. It does not tell if you are immune or not. Okay. I see. Okay. That is why you need a GG antibody test. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, once the uh, antibody test uh, turns out to be positive. Uh, is, so that means that person is ready for uh, ready for work, ready to work. Is that right? He's safe to work, go to the workplace. Does it also it, mean... That, that's a good question. If your antibody test is a positive, if the IgG antibody we are talking about, not IgM, okay. that means you are presumed to be immune uh, and, and, and I qualify that statement because this is a new virus. Mm -hmm. We cannot definitely say for how many months uh -huh. or how many in or how many years mm -hmm. you will be protected. Mm -hmm. But it is reasonable to assume that if you have developed IgG antibody, even if you are going to get the infection second time, it is not going to be that severe because you have partial protection. Oh, okay. So to answer your question, is IgG antibody is a passport to go and start working and uh, getting ex exposed? That is, again, is a qualified yes, not a definite yes. Oh, I see, I see. Okay. Um, okay, not a qualified. So when they talk about uh, this uh, plasma, uh, plasma transfer, etc., how does that work, doctor, uh, with, especially with COVID patients? Plasma is a passive immunity. Okay. Uh, you take, you will take the plasma of a person who has had COVID when he was tested oh. positive to COVID and then he recovered from COVID and then you take his blood and then uh, measure if he has IgG antibody. Then that plasma is given as an infusion, just like a blood transfusion mm -hmm. to a patient who is severely afflicted by COVID. And in, it is being used right okay, now okay. as in certain hospitals only in this country okay. and who have that protocol. Okay, got it, got it. So we had two questions from uh, Sim Gopalan. Uh, first question was, uh, can any of us get the antibody test? Can what? Can anybody get an antibody test? Yes, okay. anybody for curiosity can get antibody mm -hmm. test. Not only that, mm -hmm. the city of Los Angeles has made it free and available for anybody for asking it. Okay, and my, his second question is, do we need to have symptoms to get the test done? Yes, as of now, if the 
insurance has to pay for it, then you know you need to have symptoms. Okay. If you are going to pay from your pocket, okay. They can you can ask the Quest Lab to do it, and they have to make a, an appointment and go get it done. Okay. Okay. And another question was, would the antibody test make us eligible for plasma donation? I'm guessing they are two different things, right? Plasma donation, you know, uh, uh, you mean uh, it requires a number of things. One, the way you should have had the infection, yes. and that has to be uh, also documented. Second, you know, the antibody titer or the level has to be also measured because mm -hmm. some people may not have enough uh, antibody response to the infection. Then that plasma may not be that effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and just moving on to uh, the questions. Uh, old age and uh, male gender are top two universal risk factors for disease and death by COVID. Um, seems like from what I'm reading from the news uh, and hearing on the television. Uh, would you be able to explain uh, why? Okay, old age and male dead gender are the two uncontrollable, uncontrollable risk factors for COVID. Old age, no matter what you do, you know, the one thing is certain, every day you are going to get older by a day. Yeah. But you can, it is not the age, your chronological age, but it is your immune, immune, immune system aging. Mm -hmm. So you can empower immune, your immune system mm -hmm. and so that it would be stronger. Mm -hmm. That is one, one factor. Second, male. It is clearly known, both in China as well as Italy and here in the U.S., we know male is, um, number one, have a more susceptibility. Number two, they get sicker with the COVID. And one of the reasons is that male gender has a more chronic disease like hypertension, you know, and uh, uh, the heart disease and so forth. Or, and diabetes as well. And secondly, the X, X chromosome is female, mm -hmm. XY chromosome is male. There is a particular receptor called toll-like receptor 7, to which the, you know, which is the uh, receptor that defends you against the uh, coronavirus. Mm -hmm. And so women have twice as much of the X, and that is why they are uh, lucky that they have more defense power. Mm. Okay, okay. That's... So I think women are more empowered. Yeah, we are naturally empowered. Yes. <laughs> and uh, when you say old age, um, it does not, as you said, it's not necessarily the chronological age. It is just the immunolog immunological age. Is that right? That's correct. Oh. And you can, for example, for example, mm -hmm. it is a... Uh, Walter Longo from USC, Southern California, has shown that by prolonged fasting, you know, four days or more, which is, he calls as fasting mimicking diet, you can enhance and empower mm -hmm. your immune system and even reset it such a way mm -hmm. that you will mm -hmm. have the benefit of you juvenilizing or young, making your own immune system younger, regardless of your birth certificate. <laughs> so that's exactly mm. what I wanted to ask. So the may, uh, the age and the gender are what we are born with. Like RJ Vinky is a male, we can't, and he's, what, what, how old are you, 35? Probably. Uh, we can't do anything about it. <laughs> uh, we can't do anything about it. Um, so I was wondering, how can, once you're born, you don't have control over it. So what are the next uh, top 10 factors that we can do to build up our immunity and uh, make our immune, um, uh, immunity uh, age younger, you know, irrespective of the chronological age and, and still be... Uh, right. Yeah, that was one of the questions I want to ask. So, okay, let me uh, elaborate, you know, what are the 10 factors besides the old age and the gender that increases your not only risk for COVID, mm -hmm. but also increases your risk for severe disease, intensive care admission, ventilator use, and even death. Oh and these 10 factors are, controllable factors are, 
I will first list it and then I will make a comment on why and how you can make it better. Okay. Number one is obesity and a metabolic syndrome. And number two, diabetes. And number three, hypertension. Number four, heart disease. There's a coronary artery disease. For example, South Asians have a higher incidence of coronary artery disease. Autoimmune condition like rheumatoid arthritis, thyroid disease, lupus, and so forth. Immune suppression by medication, cancer, lung condition like asthma, COPD, or if you're a smoker or a vapor, and then impaired immune system due to lifestyle. And most importantly, what we call SAD diet, standard American diet of a processed carbohydrate and a high in glycemic load and then pro-inflammatory food. And then, of course, oversleep, lack of exercise, stress, and etc. And the last one is prolonged exposure to COVID-19 leading to very high viral load. Example, no matter how strong your immune system is, if you are a healthcare worker, doctor, nurses, or people working in the hospital, they are exposed to very high viral load because no matter how much you try with the PPE system we have now, you still have a lot of exposure possibilities. So now, having listed these, let me comment each one of them and see why it is higher risk and what you can do. Sure. The first is obesity, okay? Mm -hmm. Obesity means that you are accumulating pro-inflammatory fat cells. These fat cells as an, uh, act as an endocrine organ and they release pro-inflammatory messengers called cytokines. That is one reason. Second, in that if you, when you are obese, you have other conditions like sleep apnea, or uh, decreased cardiovascular reserve, and uh, increased chance of uh, uh, dysfunctional immune system. All of these lead to higher viral load and higher, higher viral shedding. So obesity is one of the major risk factors for mortality and morbidity of uh, COVID. Now the second, which is equally important, is the diabetes. Sometimes we call it as a diabetes. <laughs> now, once again, I want to emphasize, if you have a diabetes, it does not mean your risk is very high. People even count as much as 50% higher risk of mortality and morbidity if you're diabetic. The key factor is, is your diabetes well controlled, meaning thereby hyperglycemia. Mm -hmm. Your blood sugar level is very high. If your blood sugar level is high, it suppresses your first level of immunity, which is called the neutrophil function. Additionally, what you need to know is the ACE2 receptors, which is the, the receptor and angiotensin converting enzyme receptor, easy to remember, A2 receptor is where the COVID virus binds to your tissue. These receptors are increased in a person who has diabetes, and that is why they have higher risk. Okay. And one more factor, people who have hypertension, both obese, and diabetics have hypertension. They take a medication called ACE inhibitor or ARB, like list, you know, ACE inhibitor, like lisinopril, yeah. yeah. ramipril, ARB, you know, like uh, uh, the losartan mm. or talmisartan. Okay. These are the medications that upregulate the receptor. And as of now, there is a no consensus of opinion 
whether you should stop this medicine or continue the same. So we recommend, by the way, every single working day, I see two to three COVID patients. So mm. I do this by telemedicine. Okay. I don't touch them. I see them through the television. Wow. And so these people, I tell them, continue taking your blood pressure pill and fine tune your diabetes. Okay. Because we, yeah, one more point now is that if you eat a very large meal that has very high glycemic load, then your immune system, particularly the neutrophil, is suppressed for the next two, six hours or so. On the contrary, if you fast, that immune system is more empowered. This is very important to know that, let us say, you are, are start having flu-like symptoms and dry cough. Mm. As soon as you come to know, if you want to do one thing right, you know, cut down yes. the highly processed carbohydrates because that is going to suppress your immune system, even that with one meal. Wow. It, uh, by nature, by nature. A child, if yes. they have sick, refuses to eat. Yes, yes, Your yes. dog or cat, when they are sick, they refuse to eat. Why? It is said in India, Langanam Paramaushadam. When you miss that meal, you go into relative ketosis, that empowers your immune system. Wow. What we do here? Mm -hmm. We go and drink juice, sugary drink. Mm -hmm. and that is not immune friendly, by the way. So that is why diabetes is a major, major risk factor. Now let me co cover now the a couple of other conditions, heart disease. Coronary artery disease is an inflammatory disease as well, and cardiovascular reserve is decreased with coronary artery disease, and that makes you more prone for complications of coronary artery disease, number one. Number two, the virus itself can infect your heart. Oh. Number three, the widely popularized and advertised hydroxychloroquine mm. is toxic to your heart. Oh my God. Particularly, it is toxic. It produces your QTC interval and indiscriminately used hydroxychloroquine can kill you by a heart attack because QTC interval has to be measured and monitored. And that is why it is not a game changer as often it has been mentioned. Mm. Mm. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Now, the all other conditions like autoimmune, you know, and immune suppression, it is all based on the, again, the empowering the T cells, CD8 and CD4 T cells and uh, yeah, immune globulin production system. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then not to forget about asthma and the COPD. Mm -hmm. If you're asthmatic, sure. the question often I see in my everyday practice of a COVID and asthma is, people ask, by taking asthma medication, particularly steroids, you know, steroid inhaler, or if your asthma is worse, as it, as it happens due to allergy season now, in San Francisco Bay Area, then should you hesitate to take your steroid medication? My answer to my patients is do not hesitate because the worsening asthma and on top of it, on top of that, COVID is a very, very risky condition. Okay. And that is why continue taking your asthma medications. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay? So, uh, they, uh, so that now, uh, should we go to the next topic? You know, you what, what do you have? A gut microbiome issue? Or do you want me to play a song, doctor? Sure. Okay, we'll take a play, uh, take a music break, will we? Yeah. Let's see. So, this one. Uh, yeah, that song. So this is a song uh, again, one of the Rishi Kapoor songs that fits uh, very well for the Corona era that we live in. <laughs> अंदर से कोई बाहर न जा सके 
सोचो कभी ऐसा हो तो क्या हो सोचो कभी ऐसा हो तो क्या हो हम तुम एक कमरे में बंद हो और जा देखो जा Dr. Naras Pat, MD, FACP, uh, very, very renowned uh, uh, heart medicine, immunologist, sleep apnea medicine. He's also, uh, he's also an author. Uh, he's, also, uh, uh, he's, also, uh, uh, he's also faculty here in the local Bay Area College. Uh, several, several uh, specializations under his belt. Today he's uh, here with us to talk about um, how can we promote our immunity to combat the coronavirus in case it attacks us and a lot of other topics around us. And uh, the next question to, to, to you, Dr. Uh, Naras, but is about uh, <clears throat> the gut microbe uh, is that single unifying hub of the immune system that, uh, that, that, that you can immediately work on. Is that right? Uh, yes. Yeah, let me explain that part. You asked about the gut microbiome yes. and is a single unifying hub of the immune system. Right. And here is, the, here is what I, we, we would like to share with you, that we have two brains. The ah. first brain is inside your head. Okay. The second brain is in your gut, in your belly. Ah. So you want to feed your second brain so your first brain is happy. Right. Oh my God, okay. <laughs> And uh, so, let me clarify that a little further. And the very important to know is that when you balance the gut bacteria, mm -hmm. we call it the gut microbiome, then it sends messages through vagus nerve to your brain, and then also it sends messages to your lungs. So the master of your immune system and the messenger, master messenger of your immune system is in your gut. It's okay. called G-A-L-T, gut-associated lymphocyte. Okay. And this, there is a one axis is gut-brain axis, the other axis is gut-lung axis. Okay. What it means is the mucous membrane of your gut, particularly your large intestine, okay. is the commander that regulates the immune system in your lungs when the coronavirus tries to invade your lungs. Oh my God. Oh, really? That is why fixing the gut is the key. And then that one is, we are going to discuss that briefly, is based on what you eat and when you eat. Wow. That is, a, in other words, the content of your food and the timing of your eating. Okay. And okay. that. That is very important. All right, when right. you fix the gut, you get a good night's sleep as well. Because, you know, the vagus nerve, you know, you heard that what goes in vag vagus does not uh, uh, stay only in vagus. <laughs> so what goes in, uh, uh, vagus, stays in vagus goes to your brain, you know. Uh, uh. The, the vagus nerve picks up that message. Okay. And now, how do you do that? Is uh, 
use the simplest way to do that is reduce the process to carbohydrate that we eat like you know bread the pasta tortilla rice sweets these ones are they, they dysregulate your gut microbe bacteria which is called the keystone bacteria for me two days is it should be less and the bacteria should be high and then there is a bacteria called acromancy and fecobacterium these are just the scientific aspect of it so these bacteria increase when you eat the resistant starch the easiest way you can get the resistant starch is eat whole grains mm-hmm. or cook your rice and put it in the refrigerator for 10 to 12 hours or cook your pasta and put it in the refrigerator for 10 to 12 hours right. that yeah, becomes the resistant starch in the us we have potato starch powder which is easily available and green banana powder or inulin powder these are the powders you can buy very inexpensive if you use them as a supplement you can reclaim your gut bacteria and also you can synchronize your bowel movement you know and so forth additionally additionally hmm. you know you, now one thing most people do wrong is uh, increasing their screen time after the sunset that is they watch television they use their computer they use their cell phone they play the video game this is the green they this uh, exposure to blue light in this screen time screws up your immune system by decreasing the dim light onset of melatonin secretion thereby the immune system is screwed up and that is why the best you can do during this uh, locked up time or the or, or the shelter in place time is do your screen time before sunset and if you use it at all after sunset use blue light blocking filters mm. you know there are many filters for the computer for the screen time of any screen and that is how you can empower your immune system by synchronizing your body rhythm to the circadian rhythm of sunrise and sunset fantastic so mm. so what is the uh, shall we move on to our final action plan yes sir yes doctor uh, could you okay. just walk us through okay we will conclude yeah. by giving you okay. the final action plan okay. of a prescription versus a prescription okay prescription is what not to do what not to do is the highly processed carbohydrate that is the immune suppressor you have the whole grain and then try to do some degree of intermittent fasting i personally do 8 hours of eating window and 16 hours of fasting starting from last night dinner until noon today and then if you do eat breakfast then eat something like avocado or or good fat that way you go into ketogenic state now second then sleep well and exposure to sunlight and hydration if you have plenty of hydration if you are to sick if you are to get sick then cut down carb intake or go to only whole grain so that you go into relative ketosis so that your neutrophils that uh, that empower your immune system are stronger finally i want to add to what supplements you can take there are three vitamins we recommend vitamin a up to 25000 units per day vitamin c that is about one, half to 1 gram per day and vitamin d 5000 international units per day then we also recommend zinc as a supplement because that 30 grams i'm sorry 30 mg 30 mg of zinc gluconate is preferred and that one in in a way slows down the entry of virus into the cell and also slows down the multiplication of the coronavirus inside the cell mm-hmm. now it is important for you to know that 
the Institute of Functional Medicine has recommended some other supplements as well, such as curcumin, which is, uh, you know, the, derived from uh, uh, haldi, mm -hmm. you know, the, uh, the uh, mm -hmm. and then the quercetin and the N-acetylcysteine and so forth. But in our practice, we generally recommend number one, resistant starch, number mm -hmm. two, fish oil or fish oil equivalent, which is called omega-3 vegan oil, which is an anti-inflammatory, and to cut down the pro-inflammatory cooking oil, they like the safflower, sunflower, soybean oil, and, and corn oil and so forth, and use olive or avocado oil for cooking, which is anti-inflammatory, and these supplements that I already mentioned, and then uh, most importantly, you know, the do not think lock, lock, lockdown state or shelter in place is isolation. It is only isolation for your body. Your mind can still be connected by these electronic and other devices, you know, with your own friends and family so that you can share and then care. Mm -hmm. So with that note, I could open up for a few questions if there are any. Uh, let me just check. I had a question, Doctor. Um, you talked about the vitamins uh, D, C, A, and zinc, and B6, etc. Uh, do you recommend that these vitamins need to be taken only during this era till we get through this period? Or do you think uh, we need it in general life after we cross a specific age? Okay, very good question. These vitamins we generally recommend all the time. Oh. But at this time, at this time, you know, it is a life and death situation. So if you want to have your odds against the coronavirus, empower your body with these vitamins. And also we recommend multivitamin. You know, the, we, we, in our research, we found most of the one a day multivitamin is not quite enough. We recommend two a day vitamins, and then we recommend one particular brand that we found to be very successful, mm -hmm. and that is made by a life extension company, which you can always buy online, and then it's the two a day, because it has ample supply of all these vitamins that I have mentioned. Okay, great, okay. great. That's good to know. Let us uh, load up on the vitamins in that case. Already, great. Thank you, doctor. Thank you so much for your time. And uh, and I'm going to be sharing the material that you shared with me, uh, with my listeners and my followers on Facebook, and uh, uh, anywhere else on social media, uh, so that the more people are aware of uh, this valuable information. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so thank much, you. doctor. That was really. Yeah, I enjoyed. I yeah. enjoyed uh, interacting with you all. Yeah, us always. We always. Uh, we feel wiser after talking to you every time. Thank you, doctor. So, uh, listeners, uh, that.